Welcome, fellow anglers, to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I am Captain Ryan Van Fleet, your host here in the Florida Keys. Each week, I bring you fishing tips, stories, gear reviews, and more to help you maximize your fishing trip, catch big fish, and overall have fun. So I have a little Mako shark story I want to start off with. The, the reason why I'm talking about this is that every year we do get a push of Mako sharks that come through the Florida Keys. And now, thanks to the power of social media, more people are finding out about it. And then there's a group of charter boat captains every year. They'd go to the humps, and then they would you know, live bait for Mako shark. You target Mako sharks the same way you would marlin on the hump using small blackfin tunas. Last March, I was fishing with Brandon Meltzer, a good friend of mine. We were... We were actually live baiting with goggle eyes on conch reef, looking for sailfish and wahoo and all that good stuff. And then Brandon looks over and said, hey, look at that mako shark. <laughs> so the mako shark skied on a tuna and Brandon seen it. I didn't see it personally, but Brandon did. So I said, well, I bet we're going to catch this thing. And it wasn't more than a half an hour later that we hooked the mako shark on the downrigger bait. It was We hooked him on 30-pound fluorocarbon with a kingfish rig using a live goggle eye as bait. So Brandon grabbed the hold of the rod, and I said, we'll get to the front and get on the cooler, and we'll just chase him down and see if we can get a leader release on him and say we caught him, actually. So what happened was Brandon went to the front of the boat, sat down, and then we started chasing him, and then, boom, that thing jumped, which is, which is what I wanted to see. I wanted to make sure this was the Mako shark, and, oh, man, it was. The thing was huge. It probably was pushing 300 to 500 pounds, it was a little, it was almost over half the side of the boat. It actually looked like a white shark. It was so big, but it was a Mako. So anyways, we like I was saying, we had, we were using an extremely light line and light leader. When the fish skyrocketed, he actually jumped twice. And then the second time he just, he jumped and that was it for the wire. And there, there he went. So if you have a Mako shark on your bucket list, now's your time to get down here to the Keys Go to the humps, catch some small blackfin tunas, put them out on some heavy wire or heavy mono, and put in some time. There's a good possibility that you're going to hook one up, and hopefully you'll you'll land him and get a nice picture. First, I completed a Ballyhoo rigging video for you guys. I show you exactly how I do it. I put it up on my website. Uh, you're gonna you can find the video in the show notes for this podcast, and also it's on my YouTube channel, Good Karma Sport Fishing. I'm I'm not really doing much with YouTube right now, so I just put the videos up there for reference so people can refer to them. As far as uh, Ballyhoo rigging goes, the terminal tackle, hooks. Let's talk about hooks first. Now, I've experimented with all types of hooks, but I always come back to the Mustad number 8, 3401-DT for Ballyhoo rigging. It's a, it's a good hook for trolling for me. I've used it for years. Now, one thing you guys got to do is make sure that you sharpen each of these hooks after you take them out of the box. I buy the, I think I got the package here right in front of me. Uh, I buy the 100 pieces in the at Bass Pro. So I buy them in bulk. I usually rig uh, 100 to 200 Ballyhoo rigs in one setting. So I just finished doing that. for. They should last me for the next two months. And as far as the main line goes on my reels that I use for, for trolling, for dolphin season, um, all my reels are spooled with Mamoy High Catch Diamond. 40-pound uh, uh, blue color. I've been using the same brand and color for years. I love Mamoy line. It seems to last me. It really does hold up to the UV and salt. Uh, leader line. I use 5 to 6 foot, a 40-pound Mamoy diamond presentation fluorocarbon leader, pink in color. Don't ask me why. I've been using it for years. I use fluorocarbon mainly for the abrasion resistance and then the stealth. Just more of a mental thing for me. It gives me a little bit more confidence. But I want to talk a little bit more about the leader, which I feel is very important. Now, I tell people fish with a brand of leader that you have confidence in. I highly suggest that you make all your dolphin lure or all your dolphin ballyhoo rigs with fluorocarbon mainly for the abrasion resistance. Second, um, the breaking strength of Mamoy is fluorocarbon is just a little higher than the 40 pound rating. It takes a lot to break 40 pound diamond line. It's, I've put 40 pound through total hell through big amberjack sharks and that stuff just holds up. So I have a lot of confidence in this brand. So I stay with it until it proves me otherwise. Okay. So I like to use lighter fluorocarbon line when I troll. Main reason for me is confidence. Now in, in the back of my brain, I feel that 
the larger diameter, if I use a larger diameter line, that's more surface area that's available for that fish to bite. So he can chomp on it a little bit more than he can a thinner diameter line. In other words, it's easier for him to eat. Now, I have caught several large dolphin, and this is the truth, early season that have heavy fluorocarbon hanging out of their mouths. So when I come in and I catch him with 40 pound, who knows, it might be a fluke, but I've seen it time and time again. Now, I've also seen this with mutton snappers as well. So, okay, as far as the leader length goes, I use five to six foot of leader as I work alone and the client just winds the fish to the leader and I gaff him for the client. Uh, remember guys, uh, you know, a decent spring summer slammer dolphin in the keys is 40 pounds. And if you, and if you do catch a blue marlin, you can chase it down and release it quickly. 40 pound fluorocarbon is my choice of leader, but remember what I said in my last podcast, uh, make rigging your own and do what you feel is right. Now I do keep a heavy rig available, especially if I'm offshore for the day around a full moon because a lot can happen there could be a big blue swim up while we're dolphin fit why you know we got schoolies up there and or we could see a big mako shark or something that we want to have some fun with just a lot of things can happen so i do carry a heavy rig um, i just finished like i said earlier i just finished making 200 ballyhoo rigs it takes me a few hours and i do it early in the morning before the uh, the sun comes up so i can concentrate on each rig and i don't have any distractions of the phone or social media now, why so many, you ask? Now, first, the downside to using light leaders is that they don't really last. You know, if the leader hits the deck and the fish rolls on it, that leader gets tossed around and you, know, you have to check it for nine times out of ten, it gets nicked. So I trash it. Now, I don't reuse any hooks. Uh, the hooks that I use are they're a one-time use hook and they go right into the trash. Uh, that's another reason why I make up so many uh, Ballyhoo rigs. Now, if I do get lucky, I may get three fish out of one trolling rig before before it goes in the garbage. Yes, I do burn through a lot of rigs. And you're probably laughing at me about this, but I do burn through a lot of rigs, but I do catch a lot of fish consistently, even on tough days using 40 pound. But putting in the rigging time on a windy spring day is not a big deal to me. So I just plan it. And when it's blowing 20 from the east... Yeah, I get a lot done at home, and I get caught up for the spring. And mainly, you know, it's like I said earlier. It's I catch fish cons, can, I catch fish consistently using forty pound, and my clients have caught many nice fish over the years using it. So I stick with it. Now, as far as constructing the leader goes, I use a very simple system. I've been doing it for years. First, I never have used a chin weight, or or have I crimped. My system is really simple. I basically, <laughs> this is what I do, guys. I tie the leader directly to the eye of the hook using an approved clinch knot, and then I attach a, a piece of wire, wire, um, the rigging wire, copper or monel, to the eye of the hook. Then I'm done. And I've been doing it the same way for many years, never a problem. I skirt all my ballyhoo with custom sea witches by Wild Willie. Um, I either use a sea witch, and sometimes I'll put a skipping ballyhoo out there. Sometimes the fish want them dressed up, and other times they want them naked. Uh, I'm not um, I'm not a run and gun type fisherman. Never have. I like the old school trolling. It's caught me a lot of big fish. That's my style of fishing. I'm very confident in trolling. I tell clients that want dolphin fishing trips with me that they got to be prepared to troll with me. If that's not what they want to do, then I highly suggest they. They book with another captain that enjoys running and gunning. So every captain has their own style. Mine's trolling. So I put together a little Ballyhoo rigging video for you guys. I burned in some captions so you could follow along step by step. If, you, if you're really wanting to learn how to improve your Ballyhoo game, I show you exactly how we do it. I keep it very simple. Now I do have some other techniques that I use. I'll share those down the line when I get a few listeners, but I'm not re quite yet ready to show you guys. So as we move forward and the more you guys are sharing and the more listeners I get, then the more I'm going to share. So some things to look forward to in the future as the podcast grows and the more listeners I get. Like I said last week, the more listeners I get, the more, uh, the more I'm going to share with you guys. So I want you guys to learn how to lie ballyhoo fish without that damn copper wire. <laughs> it's annoying. So I'm going to share with you a, a special technique that 
only a few people use down here. It, it works very well. And the guys that are consistently in the money use this rig. So I, I'm going to share that with you guys, but that's going to be in the future. We're going to probably do that, you know, maybe this fall or we'll just, we'll just see how it goes. Also, I've got a simple live bait technique that I'm using for mutton snappers with pilchards. That's, that's working really well. It keeps your pilchards swimming straight. It, it helps the hookups. It's just a, been an awesome, awesome little hack that I came up with. So you have that to look forward to. And a trick for running live bait off the outriggers using your spinning rods where you can ditch that copper drop back wire thing that, that, that for some reason, guys, just certain things annoy me and I come up with, and I work really hard to come up with alternative solutions. And I, I finally did this last season. It's been working great. I ditched that copper wire drop back for my spinning rods and I set up this outrigger system that's kicking ass using spinning rods when I use live bait. So I'm going to share that with you guys as well. For you guys that have fished with me live baiting, you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, ah, no more wire dangling off my spinning rods and false releases because of the weeds pulling the live bait off. Um, how come nobody talks about this with that stuff? It's true. It, it happens a lot. It's really annoying. So anyways, you guys got that to look forward to. Uh, like I said, the more listeners I get, the more tips I'm going to share. So I really appreciate the guys that are tuning, each week, tuning in each week and sharing this podcast with their buddies. Lastly, guys, I really appreciate those that shared my podcast through their social media channels last week. So the more listeners that I get, the more I'm willing to share and help you get better. So I've got a lot of information and that's what the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast is all about, is sharing information and helping each other get better. So that's all I got today, guys. Have a good one. Thank you for listening. If you have any feedback, comments, questions, or suggestions, I would like to hear from you. You can find me on Facebook at Good Karma Fishing Charters, Instagram at Good Karma Sport Fishing underscore FL underscore Keys, or you can email me at goodkarmaryan at gmail.com. Please also share this podcast with a fellow angler and check out my website, goodkarmasportfishing.com, and sign up for my monthly newsletter. I aim to provide you with fishing tips and information so you can make the best out of your time fishing. Most important, just remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good. <laughs>